Okay, in this video we're going to discuss the uh, programming, the operation and diagnostics of the NICE Home ARIA 401. Uh, the programming requirements are exactly the same on the ARIA 400, the ARIA 200 and the model control panels are CL202 and the programming for that again is very similar across the other range of NICE Home products such as the Maestro uh, 200 or Maestro 300 which is the articulated gate kit. So to start, we'll go through the connections. Um, so obviously starting with the mains connection at the bottom here, originally you would have had a, um, a European plug connected to that. So remove that and replace it with your mains connection from wherever you're taking that from. Plugged in on the left-hand side here is the power from the transformer. So leave that as it is. And uh, going from the top, from left to right, we've got motor one and motor two connections here. Um, now, the reason I'm wired into motor 2 connection is because I'm running a single motor. So if you were to wire a uh, single motor into the motor 1, when you're programming the limits, you'll have some issues. The requirements for when you've got a single motor on this control panel is to wire in out of the motor 2 connection here. So moving on, we've got the flashing light output, uh, which is supplied in the kit. It's optional whether you fit that or not. It's recommended because it has got an integrated antenna as well. but you know, if you, you choose it not to fit that, it's not going to affect the performance of the of the motor or the control panel. Um, next, we've got the terminals labeled bus. This is for your photocells and other bus devices which are available in the nice home range. But the devices which are suitable for this input in the kit are the photocells on display here, which I've got wired back into that input. Next, you've got the stop input, which is for other safety devices, such as safety edge, stop command input, so, so, so emergency push button or some, something along those lines. But for this demonstration, we have a, an 8.2K ohm resistive safety edge wired into that input there. That's not supplied in the kit. That is available from various sub-distributors up and down the UK. But one thing I'd mention about this stop input, which is a, a very good feature of the, of the panel, is that it can monitor normally open contacts, normally closed contacts, or resistive contacts. So I have an 8.2 kilo ohm resistive safety edge wired into here. It can actually monitor two loads of resistance. So if I was to have two safety edges wired in with 8.2 K ohm resistance in parallel into this input, so running the resistance to 4.1, it can monitor that as well. There's a bit of programming to do before we can monitor those, but I'll get to that shortly. And the next input is labeled SBS, which stands for step-by-step. Step. That basically is for any kind of third-party devices such as intercoms, keypads, any hardwired kind of push buttons or anything like that. If you basically put a momentary contact across these two terminals here, it will operate the gates in the open and the closed direction. So first command will open the gate. Second command, if it's in travel still, will stop the gate. And the third command, if you used to trigger these inputs, will close the gate. And like I say, it's for mainly third party devices that you'd wire across there. And the final terminal is for your antenna. So if you were to fit the flashing light, which came with the kit, and uh, used to wire the antenna down, we're using a short piece of coax from the flashing light to these terminals here. The center core will go into the left terminal and the the braid achieving will go into the right terminal and that will boost your range on the remote controls but i mean typically this comes fitted as default and you'll get a good 50 meter range on that anyway but if you're in kind of a, an area where you're getting radio traffic or high volumes of radio traffic and your remote controls um, aren't performing as well as they could be then fit the antenna and you'll get a much higher range uh, next thing we want to kind of go through is just the programming. So assuming that you've got your motor connected, your photocells all connected, your emergency devices such as your safety edge to connected and your uh, intercoms and things like that, that that all wired in. The next process will be to, to go through the programming of the board. Now, when you power this up out of the box, this is exactly what you will see. You'll see the middle and the bottom LED uh, flashing, flashing away. That's, uh, that's showing, signifying that nothing has been programmed into this panel yet. And you'll also just notice here that uh, these buttons, your three buttons, are labelled P1, P2, and P3. So when I'm referring to that in the video, that's uh, that's the reference. Okay. So the first thing we have to do before we can go any further on this is register the devices to this control panel. Now, as I said before, I've got one set of photocells connected and I also have a safety edge connected. Now, also this, the 
safety edge is wired into the stop input and I mentioned before that this input will monitor normally open contacts, normally closed or, or resistive. So to register the state of what's wired in there right now, what we have to do is press and hold down the P2 button until the LED next to it flashes quicker and then let go. Wait for that to stop flashing and then it should move on to P3 flashing and P2 will be off. If you've ever got P3 flashing like this is now, that's signifying that you need to do a search for the limits. So you need to do a position search for the board to register how far they want the gate to open and how far it needs to close. So it's exactly what we're going to do. So to do this, what I'd recommend or what the, book, the manual recommends is set the gates about halfway. So manually release them using your manual release key. In fact, before I get ahead of myself, before we search the limits there, we need to make sure that the stops are in the correct position. So again, using your manual release key, disengage the motor and uh, run the gate to the fully open position. Underneath here, you'll see these stops for the open and closed positions. Now using a five mil Allen key, when you manually release that, run it to the open position, slacken off the stop, move it up so it's tight against the, the trolley, which runs up and down, and then tighten it back in. And then you want to do the exact same for the closed position. So manually move it fully to the closed position, adjust the stop so it's snug against the, the trolley, which will have moved as you've manually repositioned it. When you do a position search, we need to make sure that the trolley or the, the gate is set halfway. So here it is here. The reason for that is when we do a position search on the control panel, you always must make sure that the gate runs in the closed direction first. And this is so that the logic of the photocells are operating correctly, the logic of the SPS input is operating correctly, and uh, that the gates will stop and reverse in the correct direction if whatever, one of these devices is triggered. So, gate must always go in the closed direction, uh, which on a typical setup would mean this trolley would run in this way. If it starts going in the other direction whilst you're doing the position search, power down the system and you'll see the, on the motor connections here, we have a positive earth and a negative. We just need to switch the positive and negative over, and that will uh, change the direction that the motor will operate in. So get, let's go down to the position search then. So what we need to do is just press and hold the P3 button down until the LED next to it starts flashing, and then let go. You'll hear the click on the board, and you'll see the motor start running to the closed direction. Now, it will be running at a very uh, much slower pace in this, uh, at this stage uh, because what it's doing is registering the force requirements or the torque requirements to the, uh, to the motor because this uh, panel has amperometric sensing. So it monitors the, the draw from the motor and if it peaks or spikes above a, a nominal range, then it will, the gates will recognize that they've come into contact with an obstacle and stop and reverse. So the gate's now going to the open position. And as soon as it gets to the open position, it will close at the normal speed. Now, Worth noting as well, whilst, it, whilst this is doing this uh, position search, do not pass through the photocells whilst in operation, otherwise you'll interrupt the travel and you'll have to start from, start from the start again. Okay, so position search is complete. P2 LED will flash momentarily and then should go off. Okay, so now you'll notice we have P1, P2 and P3 LEDs all off. And the next step, would be to program the remote control. So you'll get two remote controls in your kit. Uh, it looks similar to this. And what we have to do is program this into the, the board via the P1 button here. Uh, there's two modes to program this in, but I'm gonna program it in, in a mode where all four channels on the remote control are assigned a certain behavior. So what we need to do to program this, press and hold down the P1 button, and keep it held down until the LED comes on solid, and then let go and then press any channel or any button on the remote control and keep it held down until you get those five short flashes. 
the LED will come back on solid. Wait around 10 seconds for that to time out and the, uh, the LED will go off. And this remote's now programmed. So before I operate this, I should give you some details on what, uh, what these channels' behaviors are. Top left channel is step by step. So again, that will open, stop and close the gates. Top right button will be the pedestrian mode. So if when you change or program a pedestrian setting on this control panel there, you'll be able to open the gates to whatever position that you like. But I think by default, one leaf will open all the way, but you can adjust that so that it opens partially. Bottom left button uh, is open, so it will only ever send an open command to the gates. And the bottom right button is the close and so it'll only ever send a close command to the gates. So if you press, if we press the top left button here, like I say, we'll start opening the gates. If I press it again, it will stop. If I press it a third time, it'll begin to close. Okay, if I press the bottom left button, which is the open only, it will start opening the gates. If I press it again, it will stop the gates. If I press it again, it will try to open the gates again. So those are the main behaviors there. Um, but you may want the, to use the pedestrian mode, it's quite a popular function. Uh, but we need to program this control panel uh, if we want the gates to open only partially. So now we've got this remote programmed in that mode, and you have to have a remote programmed in that mode where all four channels are assigned. We can now do some further programming on the board, which will allow you to kind of adjust the pause time, the pedestrian opening kind of angle, etc., and motor force settings and the step-by-step -step function as well. So to do that, we need to take the remote control and press the top two buttons down together for at least five seconds. Now on the control panel, you'll see the bus LED flash rapidly. You can't see it in this angle, but uh, it will. And uh, after those five seconds are up, the bus LED will go off. So to put it into this mode, press and hold down the top two buttons for at least five seconds. And until that bus LED goes off, let go. And then to program the pedestrian mode, press the top right button just once and release. Now that will open the gate to midway position. Rather than one leaf all the way, it will open the, uh, the gate to the halfway position and uh, you can walk through uh, rather than open the leaf fully. After a few seconds, the, it will time out. So if I send that back to the closed position now, I'll go all the way to the closed position. And now if I press the top right button, that trolley will only go to around the halfway point. And stop. And if I press it again, it will close the gate. So there are various other features that you, or functions that you can adjust on there. Like I say, the pause time. So by default, it's 20 seconds that the gates stay open for. I'll show you how to turn that on in a sec. Uh, but you can adjust that to either 10 seconds, 40 seconds, or 80 seconds. The pedestrian opening, which we've covered, there are various settings for that as well. The motor force, now by default, is set to medium low. So if you had a, a larger gate with kind of a large percentage of infill on there, it's getting kind of obstacle detection. Um, uh, triggers by wind or something like that. You can increase the force to counter that. And then there's the step-by-step -step function as well, which you can adjust. So you may want to do that. So for instance, if you've got a vehicle loop detector on the inside of the property, if you drive through that vehicle loop detector whilst the gates are opening, they may send a stop command to the gate. So you can adjust that step-by-step -step input so that it only ever sends an opening only command. And so it'll ignore any second triggers whilst the gates are running into the open direction. A couple of the other functions that are on the board here uh, are to put this in a faster mode. So if we wanted to increase the speed on this, just press the second button down just once and release, and the LED will come on solid. And if I press the button on the remote control there to open the gates, you'll notice it's visibly faster, notably faster than it was before. 
Uh, the other function that you want, you may want to switch on is the auto close, and that's literally just by pressing P3 just once and release. And these LEDs, if they're on permanently, that's what they're indicated by. It's that the uh, second LED is that it's in a faster mode, and the third LED which means the auto close function is on. And at the moment we've got that set to 20 seconds. I'm not too sure if because I set that on whilst it was in travel. I don't think it will auto close, but we'll see. Um, Yep, that's auto closing now. So after about 20 seconds, that auto close function is uh, kicked in. Um, one thing I'll put points out: photo cells. If I block the cells, so a pedestrian walks through, the gate will stop and reverse the entire direction. So you'll see that running all the way back to the open position now. If my safety edge is triggered, it will stop and reverse just momentarily. Now. Let me just take you through some of the uh, diagnostics on this. So if I send my gate back to the closed position, you'll notice my ECS bus is flashing once every second or so. If I was to pass the photo cells, you'll see two short flashes and a pause. Okay, That means my photo cells have been triggered. If you've ever got a, uh, a problem with your gate system, which is the nice home or M house or um, uh, this particular control panel there, that bus LED doubles up as a diagnostic LED. So you must kind of take note of what that is doing, whether that's flashing once steadily per second as it should be, and whether your stop LED is on. So the other kind of behavior, if you've got uh, a problem with your gates, may be that the stop LED is not on, and that references the um, uh, safety edge. So if my safety edge was then triggered, stop LED goes off, I've just triggered the photo cell there as well, that's why I'm getting two flashes. Let me just move this out a little bit, trigger it again. So without triggering the photo cells, when I trigger my stop input, I should get uh, four flashes. One, two, three, four. So four flashes indicates that the stop input is uh, has, a, has a problem or malfunction. So you need to identify what is connected into your stop input and re remedy the problem. Um, so yeah, like I say, that uh, bus LED kind of it doubles up as a, a diagnostic. So any kind of problems or any uh, situation where you find that you're having sporadic issues with the motor at all and it's stopping or reversing, always refer back to that stop LED. We briefly talked about that if you need to increase force settings due to unwanted triggers for the obstacle detection in the motor, there, the bus LED will tell you if there's a, if it's obstacle detection by force limitation, and that is by three flashes. So if the bus LED is flashing three times with a pause, three times in a pause, then it's the obstacle detection kicking in and so you may need to just increase the force setting slightly or check your geometry or the angles that the motor is pulling at. That is all for programming on the control panel there. Uh, if you've got any queries, please visit our website manuals.easygates.co.uk for videos and tech manuals or email us at technical at easygates.co.uk.